Hello, Nuggets. The new football manager features a uh, headline overview. What do they call it? The actual video is called Headline Features. Uh, just dropped, video just dropped, describing what's coming out in Football Manager 2021 uh, and some very good stuff and some... Eh. <laughs> Overall, I mean, you know, this has been a hard year for them, so uh, we've got to support them, right? It's been a hard year for everyone, but we've got to support the game we love. Uh, so there are a couple of things in here which uh, are obviously just spin. They're just fluff. <laughs> like trying to pretend this is new and it's not new. It's always been in the game. They just, you know, put a fresh coat of paint on it. But there is also some new stuff in here, which I was kind of surprised at, actually. Uh, and some I'm not crazy about. Let's watch it together. All right, can you hear this? All right, mate, how you doing? My name's Spencer Owen and welcome to Football Manager Spencer. 2021. I've been given the great pleasure of giving you guys a quick overview of some of the new features. Who is this guy? On Do we know him? Which I know, just like me, a lot of you have been waiting Maybe for. Maybe I'm the only one who doesn't know. Sports Interactive officially announced this year's game, including the news that this series is coming to new platforms and stores this year, uh, including Xbox okay. One, Xbox Series X and okay. S, and the Epic Game Store. PC Master Race. The short features teaser, and today I get to pull back the curtain a little bit further. All like right. Every year, there's loads of new additions and fine tuning under the surface, but for this video specifically, I'm going to focus on four key areas that have been significantly upgraded. Last year, there was particular emphasis on long term planning and development, but this year, the focus is all on you, the manager. Okay? From small time conversations to big time cup finals, the focus is on you. I'm already thinking about who I'm going to do my first save with. But in the meantime, let's get under the hood of Football Manager 2021. They could have cut the first minute out of this video because he didn't say anything there. It's all on you. And then he, when you'll see, he goes into the descriptions. It's not all on you. One bit kind of is. First key area is interactions. Okay, Communication in FM21 now has far more purpose. What? So this is actually exactly what I asked for in the wish list. So I'm really excited about this. Is that the interaction system was feeling dated and very repetitive. And I felt that it needed an overhaul. So, I mean, it's awesome. I got, um, I feel blessed. Um, yeah, so pretty excited, but there are some issues, as you'll see. What you say and how you say it has been completely changed. Not only a press conference. Okay, so, I mean, let's just stop here. Look, right? So, he's going to describe it. You know what? I'll let him describe it. Make up your own mind. Series and conversation systems being completely redesigned, but so is the way you speak. This is now far more human, more real Ugh. than ever before. The team at Sports Interactive have also introduced quick chats. The rep All right, uh, they go back to it in a minute. So this is the stuff that's fluff, right? The quick chats idea. But actually, all of these stuff you already have in there. As vice captain, I want to take time out. Thank you for your contribution to the positive image that the club currently has. We already have that. We already have praise role, praise conduct, praise last five games. I mean, there's already a stuff you can praise. Possibly they've added new stuff to it, which would be nice actually, because that it does it does get into a routine. I don't know if you do this when you play it, but I'll go through like okay, so the the um, the training report comes in, praise the top trainer. Are they over seven point four? Praise them. Are they under six point four? Um, criticize them. Like that routine gets a little bit dull. So anything that kind of adds to that, like if you can be a bit more specific, like. If it's not just click button praise, if it's you need to specifically praise one aspect of their training, you know, or if at least if there's some more depth to it than just clicking the thumbs up button, which is basically what you're doing, you know. Um, I mean, the, the real problem I have here is the description of the action with what they have so far, right? You opened your arms widely towards Summer, which appeared to improve his body language. It's just like... It's weird to me. It's I know it's sports interactive's game, but it feels like they don't understand the narrative they've created, right? And and maybe I'm more um, vigilant, <laughs> sensitive to changes in this because of my job. But this is like I don't know. This is narrative one hundred and one. You don't force your audience to see things a very specific way. You allow them to do a lot of work, right? Because what will happen is they will create a narrative that is much more personal and much more compelling to them than you can. So you really just, you feed seeds, right? And that's what it did so well. They had these fairly blank statements, not that emotional. 
where you could just say, I'm very unhappy with your performance. And you could make it calm, aggressive, passionate, angry. But what's calm? What's aggressive? What's passionate? You're letting the user, the player is deciding that and adding their own color to your system, to your narrative system. You just, you removed it. You're removing it with this. And it's, um, it's just a bad choice. It just is. It's a bad choice. We shouldn't, we don't need to be, we're not a camera watching this. We are the football manager. And I think they really don't understand that, which is kind of surprising because I trust them in so many things. Such a great game. Again, love this game. I'm going to reiterate how much I love it. But, you know, it's possible for anyone to take a misstep. And this, I mean, I've got to wait until we see it fully. It's your but. informal conversation, which is kind of like grabbing a player just for a one or two minute conversation. I mean, look, it's commendable to see you fully appreciate the role. None of these are new. None of these are new. But that's okay. It's been a tough year. But. They also cover a remote conversation. Okay. The people who aren't at the club, so like players who are out on loan, uh, opposition managers, journalists, okay. for example. Yes. Okay, so that sounded good, but I don't think it's going to hit where it is. I mentioned in my wish list, I would, I really want to be able to speak to almost anyone in the game. It's fine if some, like if I'm a lower leagues manager, if I'm managing Dulwich Hamlet, which I probably will because I love that team. If I'm managing Dulwich Hamlet, I love that team in football manager. I don't expect to be able to call Messi and say, hey, what's up, mate? So I'm okay with reputation potentially playing a role in whether I can speak to play people or not. But I, for, in general, would like to be able to speak to anyone in the game, right? And even if that interaction is, uh, I don't know who you are, leave me alone. I'm fine with that, right? Just shutting the door on it. Um, so I wanted to be able to improve the reasons and the the to speak to players or to other people in the game, but also to not control it so much. But I don't think this is it. I think this is just a rework of the system that's already in there. Which is kind of like grabbing a player just for a one or two minute conversation on right. a particular topic. They also cover remote conversations with people who aren't at the club. So right. Like I don't think this is new people that we can speak to. I think it's people we already speak to. Gestures are a replacement for the This is the bad system. thing been in FM for years. They allow you to be far more expressive with options for every situation you find yourself in, uh, from meetings with your squad to your weekly press conference. For a bit more co I mean, look, hands in pockets, point, throw water bottle, no reaction. This is, this is, this is, this is meme territory, right? I mean, maybe they know that. <laughs> you know, maybe they understand that people are going to laugh at this. So they're going to make a joke of this. Outstretched arms, that image is going to be, it's going to be memed, right? But not in a positive way. I think it's going to be a little bit silly. Uh, I could be wrong. I just don't see. I like as a narrative director. I look at this and I would we would throw this out immediately. Like, no, you can't do this. It's not the way you tell story. Certainly not the way you tell story in a game that is so personal for the players, right? Whether you know they've already created an image of themselves. You allow. Here's the thing. You allow the player to take a photograph of themselves and then 3D map that, very poorly, but still, onto an image of the manager. That makes a statement about the way the player plays the game. They are literally that character. You're trying to now suggest, like, what if I don't throw water bottles? You're giving me the option to throw water bottles. What if I don't do that as a person? You're forcing me to. But I can be aggressive. Everyone has some level of aggressive. Everyone has some level of passion, pa uh, passionate. You're kind of making specifics and forcing people into a corner. Don't like it. Context. Uh, if you're greeting a new signing, you'll maybe welcome him with a wide... Uh, look, is this the... Uh, yeah, this, so this is the new um, press conference, right? Um, I like it. I like the look of it. It never felt like a press conference before. It always just felt, you know... Uh, like an email, <laughs> like a screen, basically. Um, see, I like positive, neutral, negative. I don't know why you need these gestures here. I think I think whatever the default is, is what people are going to do. If it's going to be open or if it's going to be no reaction, I think people are just going to do that. But if you're unhappy with a question from the media, you may choose to be folding your arms. Oh my God. So if I'm unhappy with the media question, just to sum this up, I want a piece of writing. I want a statement that makes that clear. I would rather have, rather than this gesture system, I would rather you took the old system and instead of having 10 possible reactions, have 100. 
and have that variety. It's the variety that it needed. That's what needed an overhaul. On what you're saying, but they, they will also check, also check your personality, personality how your players and the media view you. The next well, that happened before. Day, every every fixture fixture now. All right, so before we get into this, let's sum up that. So, I like that they're taking an approach towards the depth of the system. It needed an overhaul. It gets very repetitive, right? Um, so I like the idea that they're looking at this. I hope that if this system, if this gesture system is a failure, if it doesn't, rather, doesn't resonate the way they want it to, and next year they're like, you know what, that wasn't good. Let's, let's kind of shift away from it. I hope that doesn't put them off improving your interaction system because the interaction system did need work and still does need work. Um, describing the action is a big no-no from, uh, from a narrative point of view. They're breaking a really bad rule there. Uh, the gestures are just... I don't know, it just it, it feels like you're forcing me into a corner. I don't like that as a player. Give me more loose, generic things. Give me passionate, give me compassionate, give me angry, give me calm, give me cautious, reluctant. Those things are fine because I'm interpreting it. There's not really much interpretation of throwing a water bottle. You're forcing my player character to behave a particular way. Don't like it. Um, that's it. All right. Match day. Let's see what they got on match day. I feel like a proper spectacle. A new build-up and post-match experience bring you closer to the action than ever before. Pre-game, it's all about utilising your backroom staff. This is already in there. This is just a new coat of paint. Tactical insights, team sheets and opposition reports contain... So look, this is already all in there. This is literally just uh, a coat of paint over the top, which, as I've said before, is fine. If it presents the data better, it's good. Both existing and brand new data analysis uh, to give you the ability to fine-tune your tactics ahead of kickoff. The match UI itself has been completely remodeled and modernised. Your screen is now dominated by the action, uh, giving you... Okay, so uh, they have definitely over uh, overhauled this. Uh, in general, I find that the community do a better job with UIs, with skins. So I'm sure a good one will come up. But I do like the look of this. Just watching this match is interesting. I don't know whether the match engine has been updated enough to make the game watchable. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I think that it's going to still get repetitive. If the, but they have laid the groundwork here for a superb match in. For example... If we were watching a FIFA match in this, this would be awesome. So I think it's a good step towards it. They are assuming that their match engine looks fantastic and people want to watch it. So that's good, right? Um, I still, I mentioned in my other video, I don't like this kind of mobile icon. It, it feels too mobile friendly. Maybe they're trying to consolidate the artwork so they don't have to do one set for mobile and one set for desktop or for whatever, they're trying to do all of these cross-platform um, uh, art direction is, is heading in one direction, but I can't stand this stuff. I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like the happy or the sad faces. It makes me feel like an idiot, right? I have a, an up green arrow or a down red arrow is okay. It's okay. It's, it's, that's idiot proof, but it doesn't quite make me feel like an idiot. Needing a green, happy, smiling face to make me understand is like, I don't know. It makes me feel stupid. Um, but I do overall like the cleanness of this look, you know. The full view of the game allowing you to appreciate a host of graphical improvements, including improved player models, an improved mm -hmm. animation system, okay. and improved lighting. Sports interactive will be Okay, so we know that those things are very, very minor, right? Because if they were large, if they'd really done huge work on that, it would be headline. Um, so it's they've tweaked. They've tweaked. But that's okay, tweaks are good, incremental changes. Releasing plenty more feature details prior to early access, which is normally available roughly two weeks prior to the game's official release date. Details on getting like early access are available in the description. Match day does not end at a full time whistle. A post match okay. summary gives you the complete story of the game. Okay, so look at this. So, post match summary, I like this a lot. Okay, so one of the issues I have is that um, the, the, the tweet system and the news system that comes after the game. And the post-match analysis that comes after the game, I just ignore it. Because it's all in different places. And like, I don't want to go through the tweet. I hate the Twitter feed, by the way. I hate the tweet feed in game. It's so frustrating to go through. It's a lot of junk you don't want to see. It's the same repeated stuff. You don't know if there's any real relevance to it. You're like, the fan's impressed or is it just that fan's impressed? 
Like, I don't know, it just it doesn't feel like it's actually great. Hopefully, things like how the fans have reacted will give you a good general feeling of whether the fans think you're doing a good job and therefore whether the board think you're doing a good job, right? Um, how the media have reacted. Like, I like it on one screen. Look, the table's right there. The media response, the fan response. I like this idea. I think this is interesting. Including reaction from the press and social Good. media. Good. As well as a suite of statistical information included. This I really like, right? Now, you get a post-match analysis. Again, there's looks like there's some new data here as well with the XG, the expected goals. But um, the post-match analysis, to me, is something I often just brush past it doesn't feel like it presents the data very well maybe some pro gamer fm gamers will see like oh no the post-match analysis where it's at i just never used it it just kind of i'm like oh he had a good game he had a bad game and that kind of remembers so i remember that right but in general i'm not really using it as a strong analysis tool maybe this will help me do that sports interactive's own expected goals system which makes an exciting debut in conjunction with the team at Sky Sport. You'll now be able to see just how clinical your mm. players were or weren't in front of goal. Okay, so now I'm excited about expected goals. <laughs> I mentioned in my previous video that I didn't really understand it, but hey, if it's something I use or don't use, it's good for the game, it sounds great. Looking at that, I like it. I might actually finally use post-match analysis to really start to understand how I'm misusing players. I think that's my personal failing of football manager is I don't always understand how the best role I need within my given tactic. Like whether I need to do an advance forward or a pressing forward, right? I kind of know the differences, but I don't necessarily know exactly how I should tweak. I'm, I'm a little bit throwing it out in the wind and hoping. I'm like, well, pressing forward didn't work. Let's try advance forward. That moves him up the field, doesn't it? So let's try that. Maybe the post-match analysis will help give me some clarity on that decision and I'll become a better manager because of it. But good. So match day, quick sum up before we move on. The new UI looks really decent. I don't personally like it, but I like the streamlined nature of it. Um, the post-match analysis feedback, the news tweets looks great. I'm very excited about getting that on one screen. Currently, it's something that you click through on multiple screens, like it's on news, social media, and your email. It's frustrating. All of that comes into one consolidated view. That's awesome. And uh, the post-match analysis actually looks useful. It really does. I like the expected goals feature. Exciting. All right, moving on. A real favorite area of the game, certainly one of mine, is, of course, squad building. Yes. And that's another key area that Sports Interactive has expanded this season, bringing you closer to the scouting and data team Listen. to help you secure your top target. To do this, FM21 introduces a new staff role, new <gasps> meetings, and new, new role. interactions, all within a fresh and true-to-life transfer landscape. You can now power your scouting and set your transfer intentions with brand new recruitment meetings. Before the Okay, so I've looked through this. I don't think there's much difference, but look up here. Managing director. That's new. So I wonder what that's going to be. Like, as soon as I see managing director, I think of Man United, and I think, oh, fuck, no, don't put that in the game. <laughs> <laughs> managing destructor um it's how we destroy the team but uh it's interesting there's obviously a new um there's a new role as he said which is really exciting um also i have to say i think that most of this is actually similar to what was already in there but their presentation has changed and again i think in this case it's really good because often the information you have when you're recruiting is split across multiple screens so good example i use the team report all the time when I'm building my team at the start of the season. So I'll go team report, I'll go to the formation I've been using and I'll slot in everyone in one place. So I have exactly the same number of people in my team report, in my squad depth report, uh, which is under team report, um, as I do in my squad. And then I can see like, oh, I only have one right back. And oh, that right back only plays this position. So if this helps me not have to jump from there to the scouting, to the set new assignment, that's good because during that train, that chain of clicks, it is very easy to forget your important piece of information you were looking at when you were looking at your squad depth. So re-overhauling the rec recruitment system to allow you to have a meeting that can potentially you can look at, literally highlight the positions that need filling. I think that's fucking awesome. I'm very excited. Start of every window, you're invited to a meeting with your club's top decision makers. 
Here you'll take advice from staff on positions you need to strengthen while also giving your own thoughts and setting new assignments for your scouts. Okay, he just said at the start of every window, which is again another really good choice because I don't know if you're like me, but the transfer window opening, um, I think it needs more pomp and circumstance. Like there's a big one when the transfer window ends, you get asked, do you want to take part, right? Um, and if you do, there's all of this news comes in and it's fascinating, right? It's really interesting stuff. But when the transfer window opens, it's just like, nah, it's nothing. But it's not like that. Transfer window opening is massive. It's massive in the game. So having a meeting to say, like, this is what we're gunning for, I think is very exciting. In the end, I think all of the control will still come down to me, right? <laughs> you, you still run, everything runs by you. So even though you're giving orders out to your scouts and you're maybe managing director or your director of football and all that, at the end of the day, you're just saying, look for people and put them in front of me. <laughs> but maybe this will clear it up a little bit more for you meetings prompt you to continuously think about your next move and your long-term strategy okay so in this one we have the director of football we have the owner system manager chairman okay um that's on now i'm thinking about it i think wondering managing director is something you always have at a bigger club and i just didn't know that <laughs> but i don't know maybe i don't know if that's the new role or not comment let me know um, players from well at a level scouts will look for I mean yeah this doesn't really look like new information it just looks like it's dressed up to be feel more like a meeting which I really like because I never felt it was a meeting before it just kind of was an email it was just a it was just an interaction I like the idea that I feel I'm going into a room we're focusing on one subject in hand whether you need players immediately or looking at a long term you'll get help and advice from your backroom staff Good. Of course, you're the manager, but you can choose to go with that advice. I like that. Take a different path. Final Re area recruitment sounds awesome. It's going to be the end of season experience. Okay. FM21 is going to let you relive the highs and lows of your success like never before. Success doesn't just mean winning trophies, of course. It could be narrowly avoiding relegation or achieving promotion via the playoffs. Right. Only with these celebrations. Oh, hello. <laughs> Look at that. That's awesome. The little, the little tiny little shitty stand in the middle with the confetti is gone. Look better on the pitch with improved title confetti, but... We're talking trophy lifts. We're talking podiums. We're talking confetti cannons, people. <laughs> the post-match will be more media attention and hype, too. And look at that. Oh, look, look, look. They cut away from that. I, saw, I wanted to see that screen right there. Look, not that one. That one. Okay, so they cut to the sideline a little bit. It's the same thing. At the end of each campaign, you'll also get a brand new season review presentation, which will take okay. you through your highlights on and off the pitch. This is a new book. Now, I don't know if this um, this uh, UI movement, whether the zooming in and the panning, I don't know why I'm blanking on the dev word for that, but the, the zooming in on uh, UI elements and the panning in and the zooming out and the dolly and the pan, the tilt and the cross, I don't know if that's actually what you see, if it's some kind of... Like, um, camera controlled system. Does it look like this in game? Is that Bruno Fernandez? Just no. Okay. okay, so, um, I like the idea of end of season. They didn't give us that much information on it there. Um, I like, I've said in my other video, it was in my wish list, or not in my wish list, it was in my review that I love the idea of the end of season, um, actually being more uh celebration right and also really consolidating all of the information i want to see everything i can it still looks like fluff to me it looks like best moment best player of the year young player of the year all stuff that's already there but it just comes in an email they're like let's give them a screen i'm okay with that but i would like it to go further i'd like that end screen to also be a useful tool that i can potentially bring into my scout meeting my recruitment meeting stuff like that uh, let's see. Anything else? Go to Twitter. Okay, so I hate Twitter, but I guess uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to sign up um, if I'm gonna do more football manager things. So that's it. I just wanted to give an o do it with you, go through it with you. Uh, I watched it once and then uh, started this video. I think it's really good to go over it very quickly again. Uh, the interaction system, I'm a little bit worried about, but I love the idea that they are 
overhauling the depth of the system because it needed it desperately. It was getting a little bit stale. Um, the match day, the new match looks good. The new UI looks decent. Um, I like the post-match feedback. I like the post-match analysis. I think the match day improvements overall, are all of them look like winners. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, the recruitment, uh, the managing director role is interesting. If that's what it is, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if not, do you know what it is? I'd like to know. Maybe you've seen it on Twitter and I haven't because I don't fucking like Twitter. Um, I like the meeting format idea and I like the idea of being able to take a meeting, have a meeting at the beginning of the transfer window that establishes very clearly where the problems are with your team and what needs to be fixed immediately or what they can spend the entire transfer window looking for like there's no rush of course if you're lower league and stuff this doesn't matter you don't have the money to buy extras so this is more when you have a successful team i think like when you can afford to buy a player that you know you don't necessarily play <laughs> right away you know we can't really do that much in lower leagues so um overall the recruitment looked good we'll have to see whether or not it's actually improved that much um but I'm excited about it. And then end of season is nice. I like a sum up at the end of the season. I think it's good. It was just a kind of, it's, it's just a few emails that come in at the moment and it felt very underwhelming. Um, and if you watch streamers, if you watch people doing, like I watch Loki Doki a lot, I watch um, Fox in the Box and stuff other stuff like that. When it gets to the end of the season, when they're streaming, when they're doing their videos, it's kind of a bit of a letdown, to be honest with you. They, I, I want them to be able to show a screen and talk about the series you've just watched with them. So I think it's good for streamers as well. I think that video is going to be something that uh, YouTubers and streamers will use. I know I will. So, And there's more confetti, which is really good. All right. Um, please pre-order it. I really think you should support companies in this time. I know everyone's saying that, but um, it's been a hard year. And this is the game that we love. And you can't tell me it hasn't given you its value for money. You can't tell me that. <laughs> We have got, it is the most value for money of any game I've ever played, right? It's 50 bucks. It's, what am I, what did I pay? 44.95 for the pre-order because I got 10% off. And I'm probably going to get about 2,000 hours of playtime out of that. So, yeah, it's good. All right, you little nuggets.